Hi, I'm Craig Price with Surface Water Solutions. Welcome to our next video in the series on what's new in HECRAS 5.04. In this video, we're going to cover the new culvert options and why we no longer need wormhole culverts. So let's dive straight into this. I'm going to start with the model that I created in the previous tutorial for internal boundary conditions. I've gone ahead and renamed the plan geometry and unsteady flow file to Gold Creek Dam. In this one, we're going to set up a dam or a roadway and put culverts right through them and utilize some of the new options for entering coordinates for the individual barrel center lines. So if I open RAS Mapper, you can see the uh, animation here. I'll take the depth map and you can see the flood coming and going. And what I'm going to do now is put a dam or roadway straight across from the high ground here over to the high ground here, block the river flow behind it, so form a reservoir, and then we'll put a culvert through it to get some flow going. Now I always recommend having any structures available as shape files so that they'll be recoverable in other CAD or GIS programs or in other models. So I'm going to go ahead and make them as profile lines and then export them to shape files. If you had them already created, we could just import them directly. So first I'm going to create uh, the roadway center line here, or the dam center line, from left to right looking downstream. I'm going to save this as Gold Creek Dam Alignment. And once I've got that, I'll export this as a shapefile and put it in my shapefiles here with the rest of them, Gold Creek Dam Alignment. And I will do the same thing then to, uh, for the roadway center line or the culvert center line, um, creating one from far upstream of the dam to pretty far downstream just to show that we can deal with long culverts now uh, in a different way than you could in version 5.03. So this one I'm going to call my culvert center line. And when I export this one as well, it's going to go into the shape directory. And again, I'll call this culvert CL. Now that I've got both the dam crest and the culvert defined as shape files, I'm going to go back into my geometry viewer and uh, import them using my GIS tools. Now you'll notice under the GIS tools, the connection center line table was grayed out. You'll actually need to enter something first before you're able to see that table. So I'm going to delineate my own dam here and I'll call this Gold Creek Dam Center Line. And with that in there, now I'm going to go ahead and go back to my GIS table. And now I'll be able to use the import lines function and pick the center line that I've just delineated as a shape file. I'll grab the coordinates from this one here and paste them right over the top of this. I'll get rid of the one that I've imported and now I've got some coordinates here that line up with my shape file. I'm going to take this one now and enforce it as a break line. First editing the cell spacing and next I'm going to enforce it as a break line. So now you can see that uh, the cells have lined up with my dam and I can now have a look at the dam and edit the connection. First to make sure my dam works, I'm going to take this weir embankment and use the editor to uh, take the center line length and make a weir embankment that is exactly that long and have a look at the elevations. I'm going to go looking at the lower left from about 58 um, over to about 53 on the other side. So this will be a sloping embankment. And you can have a look here now at uh, the top of the weir. Now just to make sure that this holds water, I'm gonna go ahead and save my geometry and rerun the plan. And now I'll recompute this to see if our dam holds water. And then once we've had a look at this uh, in RAS Mapper, we'll go ahead and add some culverts to this. Now the wormhole culverts that we were using before um, used to connect to any cell anywhere in your model. But if you use the standard method, you could only connect uh, culverts to the adjacent cells um, that were immediately adjacent to the center line alignment um, that we like the one that we just created. And that made it really awkward for long uh, structures where you had overtopping flows over a structure that was very long, or also for long culverts that had to be connected from cells that were farther away from the center line alignment. So with this done, I'm gonna go back into RAS Mapper. Make sure you close your geometry window first, um, because if you try to edit both of them at the same time, you're gonna get some errors. So we can see from the results now that our dam does hold water. When it comes in, it fills 
almost to completion and uh, does not run over. So our dam is stable and now we're going to put a pipe in to make sure we can see where the flow is going to enter and exit out of it. So I'll close RAS Mapper. You can't edit structures in RAS Mapper yet um, and open up the geometry editor. So now I'm going to edit this structure as a connection and we're going to put a weir, or a culvert inside of this structure. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a culvert here. The culvert editor that comes up is very similar to the one that comes up in a 1D model. But to define the center line, I'm going to go back to my GIS tools now and go to culvert center lines and import the barrel center line. Yes, I want to do this and I'm going to grab the culvert center line that I previously created. I'm going to open this up and now I get a table that says that one barrel was added to it and I could have multiple barrels for this and now with that open you can see in here when I go back in and pull in my structure there's my barrel. Now I do want it to cross where the GIS station tells me it should be crossing 239.96 and I'm going to do the same thing over here 239.96 and I'm going to put in a few things here like the entrance loss coefficient uh, Manning's end for a concrete pipe and um, for my upstream and downstream invert um, I'm going to go ahead and measure those straight off the geometry viewer and the geometry viewer I can see the culvert center line here and if I hold control down and pull these elevations off I can plot these out and I can see my profile and so I'm going to bring it in at about 43 bring it out maybe at about 38 I'll close these windows and go back into my editor. Again, I'm going to pull this one in at about 43, let it come out at about 38. Enter in a diameter, I'll make it say five meters in diameter. This is going to be a very large pipe and hit OK. Now I'll pull back open my geometry viewer and have a look here and now you can see the pipe crossing. And uh, it's actually crossing on the center line coordinate right here, measured from left to right looking downstream, zero being this one, and over at around 200 on this side. Now previously you couldn't let your culverts go underground, but now we're going to be able to run it with the culvert in place. So I'll close out of that and let's have a look in RAS Mapper at how we did with this culvert and see if we're actually passing water through. So now you can see on my depth animation, um, water starts to fill up, backs up behind the dam, starts to appear down here behind our very long culvert, and it's actually getting sucked out from right here. Now because I created these as shape files, I can actually pull these in now um, as layers. So I'm going to add an existing layer and pull in the two shape files that I made, one for my culvert center line and one for the Gold Creek Dam center line. And when I pull those in now, I can actually take these and turn them into larger features. Click on visualization information and make this uh, as large as you want to make it. Um, I'll make this one uh, seven and make it purple. And we'll change the parameters for the other ones so you can see the uh, culvert here. And I'll do the same for the dam center line. Make that one red and We'll make that one very large as well so we can see it very clearly. And now your structure shows up and your uh, culvert shows up as well. So now let's have a look and see if we can tell where it is drawing from and which cells are getting uh, sucked into the culvert. Uh, as I animate this thing now, uh, we need to be able to find a particular time step. And let's turn on particle tracing and see where it's getting sucked in. So I might uh, fade this back a little bit so you can see it a little better um, with the terrain in the background. And you see that right there, that cell, that is where it's getting sucked in. So if I pull on, turn on my uh, 2D flow area and the cells, you can actually see which cell is being connected to the culvert on the upstream end. And we'll go to the downstream end and we'll find the same thing happening down here at the outlet. Um, so there you have it. Um, this is the new culvert function in uh, HECRAS. Um, you can see it's spewing out of the uh, pipe down there. Um, again, you, we've done this with shape files, but you could enter in the culvert center line coordinates manually. You can shape these around and snake them around any way you'd like. And if you're wanting to enter them manually, one of the things that helps is to just hold control down in the plan view. 
uh, in the geometry viewer and you can actually grab the coordinates straight from there and paste them into your Kohler centerline table. So there you are. That's your animation for the day. Um, hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you have any questions, please email me. And uh, if you have requests for any future topics that you'd like to see covered here, uh, let me know. And I'll ramp up the particle tracing speed here so you can see it a little better. And you can catch the uh, vortexes or vortices. Um, again, this would only happen if you're running it in full momentum. You won't see this in diffusion wave. And we'll cover that in many more topics in our courses. Hope you won't get a chance to sign up for our online courses or our face-to-face -face courses where we'll cover all of these things in detail. This is not a good model. It's kind of fun to look at, but um, it has not been tried and tested. Uh, there's a lot more we would have to do to this to make it valid, but um, it's been fun to do. So with that, I'll sign off. Thanks.